All right, well, we'll go over another way that you can make carboxylic acids. What, what would be a name for this type of functional group? Cyanide. Cyanide or nitrile. They might call it a cyanide or a nitrile, a, a carbon nitrogen uh, triple bond. Now, it turns out that these can be what's called hydrolyzed. These can be called hy hydrolyzed to form a carboxylic acid. Now, the mechanism for this is not covered until chapter 20. So uh, at this point, we won't go over the mechanism, but when we get to the chapter 20 material, then maybe we'll go over it then, although even then it's not the most important mechanism. But anyway, uh, let's just get the right product here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If we ignore the mechanism and we just write the product, we're basically just blasting away this nitrogen and turning the end carbon into a carboxy group. So since we're not going to go over the mechanism right now, it's pretty easy just to write the product. You simply blast away the nitrogen. You keep the same number of carbons as before. We're not gaining or losing carbons. It's just that where the carbon used to be a cyanide carbon, it's become a carboxy carbon. You simply turn the cyanide carbon into a carboxy carbon without making any other changes. This OH group here is, well, I won't even get into the mechanism. I guess it's basically coming from the water over here. By the way, hydrolysis base basically means breaking something up with water. We're going to be seeing a lot of hydrolysis reactions for the rest of the course. We'll be seeing a lot of different hydrolyses. And hydrolysis is when you break something up with water. Lies means breaking, so, and hydro means water. Basically here, we're breaking the C and the N apart from each other. We're breaking the C and the N apart from each other by using water. And as I've written here, this could be done under acidic or basic conditions. You need a catalyst for this, but it could be either a acid catalyst or a base catalyst. And again, at this point in the course, it's typical just to indicate base acid with H plus without saying what the exact acid is that you're using. So this could be done under acidic or basic conditions. Acidic or basic, so we would call this, I guess, acidic or basic nitrile hydrolysis or acidic or basic cyanide hydrolysis. Uh, the mechanism will come up in the next chapter. By the way, anything that hydrolyzes to a carboxylic acid is considered a carboxylic acid derivative. Any functional group that, when you hydrolyze it, turns into a carboxylic acid is considered a carboxylic acid derivative. So nitriles are considered carboxylic acid derivatives. E even though it's the next chapter that's called carboxylic acid derivatives, you guys are actually already starting to learn about those in this chapter as well, uh, uh, together with carboxylic acids. So when we treat a nitrile with uh, hydrolysis, it turns into a carboxylic acid. So this is considered a carboxylic acid derivative. It's actually a kind of unusual carboxylic acid derivative. All the other acid derivatives look quite different from nitriles. We'll talk about those in a second. We need heat, right? No, I don't believe so. I can double check that, but I don't believe that is heat, but the it dehyde whatever and the O H would fall off. Ah, okay. In the textbook, sometimes they use heat and uh, sometimes they don't. So whatever you did in the lecture is probably what you want to see. Yeah, heat used heat. Okay. It's so annoying that they sometimes do something and sometimes. Actually, looking at the textbook here, it looks like sometimes this can actually take a while. I got one reaction here where it says it takes 12 hours. So, anyway, so, so this is a way to make carboxylic acids if you've got a cyanide group. How can we put a cyanide group into a molecule if it wasn't there already? Having some sort of a synthetic reaction. A nitrile is a CN group. Yeah. Right? Cyanide and nitrile basically means the same thing. For example, how can we turn this? Just adding CN minus. Right. And as I think you mentioned, that would just be a normal SN2 reaction. We saw last term that cyanide is a decent SN2 nucleophile. We saw that we can use cyanide for SN2, so it's not too hard to introduce a cyanide group. That's what's something that makes this a useful way to make carboxylic acids. So you don't have to have started with a cyanide to use this cyanide hydrolysis technique, because it's not that hard to make it. 
You could simply do this, that would give us this, and then we could do the hydrolysis. Good. Um, of course, sometimes people might show the counter ion here. They might call this potassium cyanide or sodium cyanide, but those would just be the counter ions as the cyanide that you need. The one thing you wouldn't want to add here is hydrocyanic acid, because this isn't charged. You want to actually add something like potassium cyanide, because this actually has an ionic bond. This doesn't really have an ionic bond, so this would not give, be a good source of nucleophilic cyanide, especially because there's no easy way for this to lose the proton in this particular situation. So we want to use an ionic form of cyanide. Reactions that carboxylic acids can go through. 